just as to us the stars resemble some vast eternal pattern, so may the elements in atomic physics appear as a galaxy of elements. The element which has probably fascinated mankind more than any other through the ages is gold. The alchemists sought the philosopher's stone by means of which they dreamed of endowing their health, preserving their youth, and transforming base metals into gold. It was their efforts in this direction, often aided and encouraged by ambitious rulers, which laid the foundations for the science of the structure of matter, chemistry. The alchemist symbol for gold was the sun, the unbroken circle of eternity. Today, we know more than 100 elements which make up our world. Some 25 of these elements have been discovered by a small country in the far north, Sweden. By the beginning of the 18th century, Sweden had ceased to be a major political power and was instead directing her efforts toward achieving greatness in the realm of natural science. Sweden's resources were in her favor. The Swedish landscape has a changing face. In the north, mountains, forests, and waters. In the south, fertile plains. Rich soil yields fine harvests. The hills contain many treasures. Ancient mine shafts, evidence of early interest in the wealth underground. Throughout the countryside, the ores were worked, the metals extracted. Here, once, forge hammers beat, driven by the power of the water. The Falu Mine, one of the oldest in the world, it's been going for some 700 years. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the rich copper yields of this big mine helped economically to support Sweden's development and her political ambitions. The mining industry formed an important background to the growing interest in seeking out new elements. And those who sought had ample room for discovery. The ground was good. Inspired by similar institutions abroad, the Swedish Academy of Science was founded in 1739. And now the Swedish discoveries began. Georg Brandt discovered the element cobalt. Skillfully and with simple aids, he illuminated the first Swedish star in the galaxy of elements. Axel Friedrich Kronstadt discovered nickel. He produced the first systematic work on mineralogy. Johann Gottlieb Gahn revealed the existence of manganese. contemporaries became skilled in the use of the blowpipe and developed the art of separating the elements by means of the blowpipe's flame.
Carl Wilhelm Scheele was Sweden's most outstanding chemist in the 18th century. He contributed to the discovery of a whole series of elements. Fluorine, chlorine, barium, tungsten, nitrogen. Shaler's discovery of oxygen constituted a revolution in chemistry. At the same time, the Englishman Priestley and the Frenchman Lavoisier were both seeking to isolate this same element. This letter to Lavoisier shows that Shaler was the first to succeed. The year 1774. It was the master of the art of noble cookery, Jens Jacob Berzelius, who, in the 19th century, brought law and order to chemistry. He discovered cerium, silicon, selenium, and thorium, while his pupils produced five or six more elements. Berzelius published a textbook on chemistry which included tables listing the compositions of over 2,000 chemical substances. matter is composed of atoms. This ancient maxim, elaborated in Dalton's atomic theory, was of great significance to Berzelius. As a result, he established the atomic weights of 45 of the 49 elements then known. These weights are still valid today. Berzelius realized that the alchemists' ancient symbols, the unbroken circle of eternity, the cross of decay, and so forth, were a clumsy means of expression, particularly for purposes of chemical compositions and formulae. He said, the chemical symbols must be letters so that they can easily be written and printed. Based on the work of Dalton and Vesalius and others, the Russian Mendeleev produced in 1869 his periodic system. By this, he was able to predict the qualities of elements not yet discovered. And ten years later, the Swede, Lars Fredrik Nielsen, succeeded in finding the element scandium, thus filling in a gap in the system. The periodic system is the fundamental basis for our knowledge of elements and matter. The elements can also be arranged according to their intrinsic composition, from the first, hydrogen, to the 103rd, Lorentzium. And thus emerges the galaxy of elements. Sweden's Alfred Nobel, the inventor of the explosive dynamite, left an immense fortune upon his death in 1896. His will states, My estate shall constitute a fund, the interest on which shall be distributed annually in the form of prizes to those who during the preceding year shall have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. In the same year, a whole new world of research was opened up through the discovery of radioactive radiation in uranium. It was the Frenchman Henri Becquerel who was responsible for this achievement, and together with Pierre Curie and his wife Marie Curie, he shared the 1903 Nobel Prize in Physics. It is my express wish that in awarding the prizes, no consideration whatsoever shall be given to the nationality of the candidates, but that the most worthy shall receive the prize. It is in this spirit that Nobel Prizes have been awarded to outstanding men of science all over the world. Here, the American Emilio Segre receives the Physics Prize from King Gustav Adolf. He shares the prize with his compatriot, Owen Chamberlain. Every year, research produces vital new knowledge, yet it may take years, even centuries, before this knowledge can be practically applied. Many Swedish discoveries from the 18th and 19th centuries are still finding new uses in modern industry. Oxygen, for example, is used in the production of high-grade steel. Thank you. 
Manganese and vanadium are important ingredients. Cerium and thorium are used in the navigation beacon's mantle. The photocell is possible thanks to selenium. Cobalt, tungsten, and tantalum are principal constituents of hard metals. In cutting steel, in rock drills, lithium is used to make ceramics fireproof. Many and varied uses have been found for chlorine in the chemical industry. Nickel, molybdenum, and tungsten make up the incandescent system in electric lamps. The blowpipe and other such simple apparatus are no longer adequate. Today's research instruments, such as this cyclotron at the University of Uppsala, are costly installations, products of an advanced industrial system, which in its turn is based upon successful research. The dream of the alchemists to transform the elements has been to some extent realized through a widening knowledge of atomic structure. A piece of copper has been subjected to radiation. Some of the atoms have been changed and become radioactive. Part of the copper has been transformed into nickel, which will now be separated. are in the red fluid. A sample of the concentrated fluid is prepared for testing. Now the newly created nickel atoms can be studied. Research is penetrating into the heart of matter, into the soul of the atoms, where the limits between matter and energy merge. Research is becoming more and more a matter of teamwork between specialists. Scientists at the University of Lund are able to work with apparatus which has been designed and built in Sweden. In a nuclear engineering laboratory, uranium is extracted. This minute quantity of uranium oxide possesses as much energy as 100 tons of coal. Uranium is the fuel in atomic reactors. The atomic reactor, such as this one, located within Sweden's vast nuclear research center at Stutsvik, is the industrial means used to transform atomic energy into useful power. But the reactor itself is also a valuable research instrument.
Atomic science opens the portals to a mysterious and fascinating world, the limits of which are beyond human perception. Modern research, there are no national barriers. Nobel Prize winner Tay Svedbe welcomes a group of foreign scientists to his institute in Uppsala. Today, international cooperation and technical resources are important requirements, but the decisive factor is still the contribution of the individual scientist, his ideas, his deductions. These uh, transuranium elements begin with uh, atomic numbers higher than that of uranium, which is the heaviest uh, naturally occurring element. Glenn Seaborg, the American Nobel Prize winner of Swedish descent, is one of the leading scientists of our day. These rare earth elements have been found in Sweden and have been uh, named after uh, places in Sweden, a place where uh, the early uh, elements were found is the town of Itterby, uh, which is up near Stockholm. And the element terbium, for example, with the atomic number 65, uh, was found in the rare earth minerals from Itterby. Uh, also, the element uh, itterbium, with the atomic number 70, was found in the rare earths from Itterby, as well as uh, one of the elements up here in the middle of the periodic table, yttrium. Dr. Seaborg, chairman of the United States Atomic Energy Commission, led the discovery of the latest known element, number 103 Lorentzium, another star in the galaxy of elements. 